I've been playing Honkai Star Rail for some time now, and in this patch we have Blade and Kafka Banner. The game is relatively new and there is still room for improvement for the released and to be released characters to develop in the combat aspect. First off, we have Blade. He is a wind destruction unit and has a unique playstyle that would consume his HP to deal more damage. I know it sounds familiar, and the character that has this unique mechanic turns out to be one of the strongest characters in the entire game of Genshin Impact. Kit Analysis Blade is a wind destruction DPS, his ultimate can deal massive damage to single enemy and blast damage to enemies adjacent to the target. He could deal more damage based on the HP he has been lost, and based on the max HP he has. Which means the higher the total HP he has, the higher the damage output and you could build him with HP stat. And his multiplier is quite high, so if you are worried about meta, I think Blade would easily be a pick. But if you are saving for another character that you like, I don't see any problem with it. The game is still new and we would see more coming from this game that can develop the character in meta perspective. Blade's ultimate has this property, which he would bring his HP to 50%. If his current HP is exceeding 50% his ultimate will bring it down to 50. If his current HP is less than 50% then it will bring it up to 50. Therefore you can use it to heal him or you can use it to boost his ultimate damage. What also unique about his ultimate is this multiplier which the tally of Blade's HP loss in the current battle. Which means you can accumulate the HP he has lost to deal more damage with his ultimate, but it's capped to 90% and will be reset after the ultimate has been used. It is kind of the Raiden Shogun Resolve stack that you can see in the ring floating behind her. Once they're full, it will boost her burst and once the burst ended it will be reset to zero. Sadly we don't have the indicator for blades. Enhanced basic attack or skill. Hellscape. Blade's skill will consume 30% of his HP to enter the Hellscape state. During this state Blade will receive a damage boost up to 40% on level 10. During this state he cannot use his skill again until the Hellscape is ran out which is 3 turns. During Hellscape state, Blade would also enhance his basic attack to Forest of Sword for 3 turns. Using his skill also will not end his turn you can use his skill to enhance his basic attack and launch his basic attack, which technically made his enhanced state to be 4 turns. His skill and blast also will not generate skill points nor it needs skill point to be used. So, you want to rely on Blade's teammates to generate skill points. The Forest of Sword or the enhanced basic attack that we can call blast also has a good multiplier which scale on attack and HP. And each turn of his enhanced basic attack, Blade will consume 10% of his HP, if the amount of HP is insufficient then his HP will be reduced to 1%. Quite the daredevil isn't he? But worry not, because he has ascension passive which is never ending deaths which when Blade hits a weakness broken enemy, he will restore 5% of his HP plus 100. He also can heal himself by 25% with his talent. Shuhu's gift, his talent demand him to take damage. The wording is also clear in here. When Blade sustains damage or consume his HP he will gain one stack of charge. Which mean if he gets damage from the enemies or by using his enhanced basic attack he will gain charge stacks. Once it reaches maximum 5 stacks Blade will launches a strong follow-up attack and restore 25% of his max HP. For Trace's priority, it would be best to level up his basic attack first, followed by his skill, ultimate and talent. Blade Technique, Karma Wind. By using Technique, Blade will consume 20% of his max HP and deal damage equal to his 40% of his max HP to all enemies. But if he is dying, his HP will only reduce to 1. Now, keep in mind that using his Technique will help you reach the cap on his ultimate damage multiplier, hence you'll do more damage if you're about to unleashing his ultimate early. Playstyle Blade is tanky but he often sat on a low HP, hence you would want him to constantly trigger his talent to restore a small amount of HP. First start of the battle you would want to buff him before his ultimate if your ultimate is ready and Blade is on full HP, you can quickly decrease his HP to 50% by using his ultimate, on the contrary if you start with low HP, using his ultimate will restore his HP to 50%. Then utilize his skill and his enhanced basic attack which is blast to further lower his HP, and if you're lucky, the enemy's probably already dead or if they are not, Blade probably already has his ultimate ready to go again, 
you can dish out your ultimate again which this time would be much stronger than the first one and repeat the cycle if the enemy's still alive. Or if you don't have your ultimate ready but his HP is full, you can start off without ultimate by slowly decreasing his HP by getting hit or by using his enhanced basic attack, whichever one that is effective from the two methods. Why you would need blade to do ultimate first is not only to dish out more damage but also to stack up the HP sacrifice for his next ultimate. And to reach the cap of 90% HP loss, you would need to decrease 50% from his ultimate, 30% from his skill and then 10% from his enhanced basic attack. If you start off with blade on a low HP and without ultimate ready, then you know what to do. Go and charge his ultimate. By utilizing his skill to enhance his basic attack. But you would need him to heal and reach certain amount HP to consume the HP again to reach the cap of the ultimate damage multiplier which is 90%. Blade is skill point friendly which only need to use skill point every 3 turns but also cannot generate skill point. Blade will not work well with shield because his charge stacks need him to take damage or consume his own HP. If you put a shield on blade, it will be resulting blade only rely on his blast to gain charge stacks which mean his follow up attack interval will be slower than blade without shield. But this doesn't mean that a shielder is completely diminishing his damage value since in some cases you will need to maintain survivability. Lastly, Blade would also gain charge stacks from DOT. Blade's build, for an unconditional set that pairs well with Blade is a set of Longevous Disciple. This relic set is seemingly tailor-made for him, but if you have an astounding stat roll on the other relics then don't be shy to try it on him while looking for better stat on your Longevous set. Next up is two pieces Longevous and two pieces Eagle, then a set of musketeers of wild wheat. For the main stat, you would want to put a crit body, HP boots, wind damage sphere and HP rope. Another option when min maxing is speed boot and HP sphere. And as for the sub stat, aside from crit, blade will benefit from flat HP or HP percentage, speed if you're not running speed boots, effect res, then attack. Ornaments, Rudalant Arena, Inert Salsado, and Fleet of the Ages. Light Cones. Blade's signature light cone is of course would be the best and suitable for him. Rather than getting his E1. But if you go for E2 then you could skip his light cone. A secret vow is Blade's second best in slot especially with superimposition this light cone as falls a little behind Blade's signatures compares to the other light cone currently in the game. On the fall of Eon attack buff is not going to do much for Blade but its damage bonus would certainly useful for Blade, but you will need to break enemy toughness to get this buff on. Something irreplaceable, this light cone can help you maintain blade to not dying and has a nice damage bonus anytime the wearer defeats enemy or is hit. Disclaimer, I don't have this light cone, hence I have no idea as it meant every time the wearer is hit or every time the enemy is hit to get the damage bonus buff. Please let me know in the comment and I'm sorry for this. Under the blue sky will buff crit rate when the wearer defeats an enemy by 12% on S1. Collapsing Sky will grant the wearer a basic attack and skill damage by 20% on S1 but due to its low main stat it is still falls behind a secret vow. Shattered Home is also the same, which giving a 20% more damage but only if the enemy has more than 50% HP. Lastly, Mutual Demise. S5 is competitive against most of the 4 star options in the game, helps you to balance the overall crit value on your blade and costs you less materials than 4 or 5 stars but you need to make sure Blade's HP is always below 80%. And the main stat would be lower than 4 star. Teammates. Blade can work with any healers that already in the game, but the most effective healer you can pair him with is of course, Luaka, but Natasha also works well with Blade with her continuous healing and cleanse. And as for a buffer, Blade will pairs well with a damage bonus buffer or crit buffer. Attack buffs are less effective with Blade. Currently, Branya works like bread and butter with Blade. Being one of the most desirable harmony unit in the entire game, Branya can advance his Blade's turn, not to mention she can also cleanse him. You can put on planetary rendezvous on Branya and a supportive relic and ornament on her to further buff Blade, but if you don't have Branya in your account, Asta would also help your team with her speed buff although her attack buff will only help a little for Blade. And for the next slot you can either put a secondary DPS or a Nihility character that can help you debuff the enemy such as Welt, Hela, or Silver Wolf. As for a preservation units is more likely has anti-synergy with Blade, 
but in scenario where you need to maintain survivability you could slot a preservation unit with blade. There it is guys a not so long and not so short analysis on blade by me, if you are pulling for him then I bid you good luck. If you're not so sure about getting blade I hope this video could help giving more insight, blade is a strong character and unique. And if you're saving for Kafka then you are on the train with me, I've been saving for Kafka since Jingyuan banner. And I think Blade would be last long, his unique kit would be a challenge for players to play whenever he decide to consume his HP to the brim, but his damage output is also not disappointing. Good luck for you guys who pull for Blade. See you, I'm out.